Hi everybody, welcome to today's FindTheBestCarPrice.com video. Today we're going to look at a used model. It's the 2019 C7 Stingray Corvette with an exterior color of Sebring Orange tint coat. The price on this model is $59,999 and the mileage comes in at 8,582 miles. Let's get started with our tour. Taking a quick look from the front of the C7 Stingray Corvette, as you can see, I have a very elegant looking headlight. I like the way the turn signal indicators are built into the side right here and just the overall layout right there. Now, if you don't know how to turn those turn signals on when you're driving down the road, I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a little while. You do have an active heat extractor here built into the hood in case you were wondering what that is. And yes, guys, there are people out there who don't know anything about these cars. So we're gonna approach it from that angle, especially if somebody wants to buy one of these. If they've not really had a chance to research yet, maybe this video will be helpful. And here's a funny story concerning the Stingray logo on the side of the front fender right here. I was at a car show last year and somebody walked up and said, wow, that's pretty cool. Somebody put a guitar on the side of their Corvette. They did not know this was a Stingray. So that was actually rather funny. And one thing that I think is perfect here, of course, as time has gone on, we've seen the black wheels become more and more popular than the chrome wheels. And I just don't think personally that the chrome wheels would look as good on this model. But tell me down in the comments what your opinion is. Of course, you've got the marker lights here. Even though that looks really nice, I like the way Chevrolet has designed this to fit into the body, not only in the front, but they're also in the rear as well. That's not really an accessory. It's really DOT required, but looks very nice nonetheless. And the side view mirrors, no, they are not power folding side view mirrors. Just in case you were wondering, you can manually fold those if you want to. No turn signal indicators built in. And so again, more active vents right here, not only here, but also in the front right here as well. You can see in there, at least I hope you can, so every vent on this car is active. And to open the door, all you're going to do is reach right here. There's a pad that you're going to just touch with your finger and push on, and that's gonna allow you to get into the vehicle. And as we work our way around to the rear of the car, very nicely designed, Got those rear tail lights that really have a nice look. Now, a lot of people, again, opinions here, guys. What do you think? Do you like this particular shape? of the taillight or do you prefer the round taillights are really so iconic and kind of an identifying mark with corvettes of previous generations to the c7 and of course everything is power back here you've got a button down here where you can use the remote to open the hatch back here 15 feet of cargo space that's actually a decent amount especially considering that it's fixed, it's in a high performance sports car, and you have a soft close hatch right here. So I'm just gonna show you how that works. Just gonna push down on that. So you don't have to slam that down just in case you're curious. And the quad tip exhaust right there that can give you some pretty good exhaust crackles. I really like the way that Chevrolet has set this up. It does have the baffles built in, depending on the driving mode that you're in, will obviously determine the sound that you get, or if you want to, there is a fuse that you can remove to have that louder sound all the time. This depends on what you want. Well, let's take a look at the remote. As you can see, everything you would expect to see there, lock, unlock, you can open the rear hatch. There's a multiple ways you can do that. And you have a remote start. That's very useful. For the moment, this is the most recent generation of the Corvette. You will have the forward opening hood. This is the 6.2 liter or roughly 378 cubic inch engine under the hood and just to give a quick look at what we have here with the hood open this motor makes 460 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque it's made it to a manual shift eight speed automatic so you can shift in sport mode and other driving modes that this car has with the shifter paddles if you wish to. Of course, it is naturally aspirated. There's a lot of benefit to that. You don't have to deal with turbo lag. That's always a good thing. And you also have the benefit of gas mileage. Surprising in a way, 15 miles per gallon city, 25 out on the highway, a combined total of 19. <laughs> And 
taking our first look at the interior. Like I said, jet black interior, a very nice accent to the Sebring orange color. And if you'll notice, there is no door handle here. Nothing new, but there is how you open the door. You're gonna push that button right there. And if the battery happens to die, well, you can still get out by pulling up on this handle right here. Just a quick look at the nicely bolstered yet very comfortable seat. And here's something interesting, even though I don't have the ignition on to show you right there, is the control for the passenger to use the dual zone climate control. They can control the temperature on this side right here. Not the fan speed, but they can control the temperature. And taking a look into the interior from the driver's side. You don't have huge door bins on this car, but I don't know that you really need them. Not a big deal. You still have a couple of drink holders there in the center console that you can open or close if you want to. And right here is something that is very interesting. I told you I was going to show you how to use those blinking lights on the front of the car earlier. It's done via this lever right here. And the purpose of that is if you're turning to the right or changing lanes to the right and the same thing to the left, here's what you do. To the right, push that into the up position like that. To the left, you're going to push it into the down position and imagine the novelty of letting people know what you're doing when you're driving down the road. I know a lot of you don't have the money to necessarily afford that option, but it is available on this particular model. So come in here to Holmes Honda and buy it today. And as we take a look at the dashboard and everything that happens here when you fire the car up, of course, you do have push button start. So all you have to do is have that remote with you that I showed you earlier. There's no key for the ignition here in this car. And there are multiple settings for the dashboard. I have the track look up right now. You have the steering wheel mounted controls here. Here is everything for your cruise control. And then this is how you're going to configure things. Of course, answer and hang up on phone calls. Use your voice commands here on the right hand side. And there are those shifter paddles that I mentioned earlier. Pretty large shifter paddles, although the one thing I wish we could have on a lot more of these cars, I haven't done too many that have this, those shifter paddles should stay in place and actually be connected to the steering column, at least in my opinion. That way, no matter where your hands are in reference to the position of the steering wheel, you always know where the shifter paddles are and which one you're using. I mean, I know a lot of people might say, well, a really good driver probably knows anyway. And you know what? That's probably true. Something that I really like here that you won't see on the C8 is the fact that here behind the infotainment screen is a nice hidden little compartment. There's even a USB connection in there. If you want to charge your phone while you're driving down the road, that makes it a little bit easier, or maybe the passenger does, or you can store well, whatever you can get to fit in there, but do test fit first. That has its benefits. But just to show you what's here as far as your different settings and features and functionality. And for those of you who like the knobs to control the volume of the radio and all that kind of stuff, let's turn that down so we don't get a copyright hit. But that's right there. Some cars don't have that. People seem to like that kind of stuff. I find that very interesting that that is something that car owners or truck owners or whatever do like. Just to show you, like I said, you got dual zone climate control. It doesn't look like it right here. But now that I have the engine running, I can show you what the control looks like over there for the passenger side, for the passenger seat. But of course, everything pretty easy to figure out here. You do have a conventional style shifter here. You can select your modes right here by simply toggling back and forth, turn tracks control off if you want to. In fact, let's take a look here at what happens on the dashboard. So we're going to do that. I'm going to start toggling through. And as you can see, you have multiple modes, sport, track mode, you even have econ mode or eco mode. Um, can't imagine somebody actually driving their Corvette in that mode, but you never really know. There's even a wet mode, <laughs> which is interesting, but it does work quite well. And normally, depending on the situation with the vehicle, like I said, there's a fuse you can pull if you want to have that open exhaust all the time. Normally, you can hear the change in the exhaust note if that that fuse is in just so you know what's there and real quick kind of an interesting thing here i think why do i think of this i think of a cannon when i hit that right there for the 12 volt outlet right there it's kind of an interesting thing just something i thought of 
And there are your concealable cup holders if you want to. And power parking brake, and let's see, it's a little hard to do here because, well, it's a small confined area, but let me open the console here, show you what's in the center console. That's actually the piece that goes in the center right here for the cup holders. I had that out so I could stick my phone in there earlier. Not a ton of space in here, but let's face the fact, people don't really use these cars typically as daily drivers. You'd have more USB connection right here, but it is something that can be done. But speaking of driving, that's the best part of having one of these cars for a video. Let's take it out on the road and see how it performs. All right, guys, as we get out here on the road for a quick test drive with this beautiful Corvette, I have to admit, this is absolutely one of my most favorite cars to drive. And while the C8 definitely handles differently, it handles better, it's a whole different weight distribution situation, but that's what happens with a mid-engine car. But if you're more a fan of the front engine well this one's definitely going to do it for you and one thing i really like about what corvette has done over the years up to really the c8 is they managed to maintain that somewhat of an original corvette look when you look out over the hood you still have that same shape and look with the fenders and the hood and all that good stuff it just has maintained that over the years and to me that's really important and i don't think it's a bad thing that you don't have that with the c8s obviously that's a whole different design a whole different vehicle in so many ways but you still have plenty of horsepower here even with this really kind of a base model of sorts with this particular model of corvette with the stingray but here's something cool let's see if we can do it downshift a little bit we're going to downshift listen actually get some exhaust crackles out of it now I can't really do much right now because I have somebody in front of me but here's the thing you don't have to be in manual mode to do that Woo, this thing has some horsepower quite a fun car to drive give you a little bit of a punch in the gut there and even though the numbers of horsepower are by no means the highest you can get that's okay it's plenty it's a good solid power to weight ratio Handling, of course, excellent. Absolutely excellent with this car. Now, this is a really a much better straight line car than a road course or autocross or something like that. Now, there are people who could probably handle that really well, but something a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit shorter wheelbase, maybe a, a more narrow track. But one way or another, if you're just looking for an outrageous, fun car, this is definitely it. So we're going to try a little downshift again. You have to kind of drive into the downshift some. Let's see if we can do that. Oh my goodness, that just sounds so good. A little bit cold today. Tires are still a little bit cold, so not going to step on it too much because we don't want to get sideways and do anything crazy. But... get on it just a little bit there this is just a fun car to drive yeah you got some road noise it's a high performance sports car that's okay so you know what if you want to keep watching from this point on I'm gonna take just a 30 seconds to a minute and give you some good just pure exhaust clip hope you enjoy it the model in today's video, visit the link in the description for a detailed comparison between trims and pricing for the vehicle we featured or any vehicle you may be interested in. 
These pages feature information such as our recommended trim level based on price, value, and features. Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. We look forward to seeing you next time.